Kwa Haiti. I've uh, wanted to ask God that a few times, and I know better than questioning him. And God's got a great sense of humor, because the dark side of this story is I was a very prejudiced person. I had known of David's prejudice before he got saved. After he got saved, I knew the Lord had changed his heart. But the Lord showed me the purity of it. I came here on a short-term mission trip. I had really been asking God, where is the church today? Where's the signs, the wonders, and the miracles of the Acts Church that you left here? When I was here in Haiti, I found the church was still alive and still well, and God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He came back, got off the plane in Nashville, Tennessee. He didn't even walk up and say, hi, kiss me, how are you doing? He said, we need to go back to Haiti. I always wanted him to get saved, but I didn't know what to do with this radical, fanatical, turned on to Jesus kind of guy. She asked God to show her. If this is where you really want us, then I want a confirmation in my spirit. So we were here four short days when he stood to the people and he was preaching his word. And the best way I can describe it is waves of liquid love flowing from him to the Haitian people. And in my spirit, the Lord said, you ask, now look. And that was my answer. When I finished preaching that morning, there were 19 people at the altar and I said, Lord, you've showed me. It's over with. Six months later, we're in Haiti. Global Outreach is a mission sending organization. We have 197 missionaries in 37 countries. As we came, there hadn't been a definition of what the ministry actually was to be. So we prayed and we asked the Lord, okay, Lord, what do you want us to do with it? On this property, we had one well and a demand for water that I had never imagined. There was people that were literally walking eight and nine miles to come here to get water. As of today, I think we're set up on our 241st well. Every single well we've drilled is providing water for 500 people. A lot of people's getting a cool drink of water in the name of the Lord Jesus. We have a senior citizens feeding program. My wife pleaded with me to let her start feeding old people because they have nobody. There is no nursing homes in this country. And I agreed to five, and then the next thing I know, I've agreed to 10, and then 20, and 30, and 40, and 50. And I think today she's got over 60. In 1989, a pastor came to me and he said, you know, we really need a school for the kids that work in the homes of other Haitians. Really didn't have the funding, but you just step out in faith when God tells you to do something. I started with one class, then somebody paid an aid to help us, and then the next year we started the second class, and we've been going on since then. Reaching out and making a difference in the children at that age, sharing the Word of God with them will make a difference as they become adults. There's a lot of burns here in Haiti. People say, why burn clink? There's open fires. They cook on, you know, on the ground. There are big pans that they fill with food, water, and the little babies, they fall in, they put their hands in, they grab things. So we get a lot of people coming in. We see between 10 to 15 patients a day. There are times where I go home and cry. It just gets so difficult. The babies and the little ones and the ones that are burned so badly, knowing what's gonna to happen to them in this country that we cannot do for them. What brings the joy working here on a daily basis is to see them healed. For some, it would have been death. For others, it would have been disfigurement. For others, it would have been a handicap, a disability. That's the joy for us.
exactly every nation in the world has responded to this earthquake and came here. As my husband said, I think God not only shook the earth, their hearts of the Haitians were shook, and the inroads for sharing the gospel are even more open. Some immediately after the earthquake, there was one morning, Man Frank said, is there anyone here who would like to accept the Lord? And immediately a girl stood up, straight up, and she said, I want to right now. The earthquake has affected people. People realize that it could have been me, and it is definitely causing a spiritual revival. Bible. You know, since that, I have been thinking about lost people. I have seen how important, how it is necessary for saved people to think about this world dying without Christ. For years and years and years, myself and many other pastors and all have prayed, God let revival begin in Haiti. We believe that we're experiencing that and we'd like to see that continue. I'm asked all the time, what can I do? I would just love to have every single person to come here and, and just see with their own eyes what God is doing. We're here and we do the work on the field, but we can't go back there. These short-term mission teams will reach people we'll never reach. Short-term missions is about sharing the gospel. I know they come down to help and change the hearts of the Haitians, but they're the ones that get changed. We are first and foremost a mission that introduces people to Jesus Christ. There is just unbelievable potential for this place. We don't ever want to do anything just for the sake of humanitarian means. There's enough people in the world doing that. The country is not going to change because of education. The country is not going to change because we raise the social status or bring in more business or make it eco-friendly. There's just none of those things that are going to change Haiti. What is going to change Haiti is Jesus Christ. Haiti is in my heart. Haitian people have enriched my life. God is so good. He is so good. And I thank him every day for having the opportunity to just be a part of Haiti. When I look at Haitian people, I just see beauty through and through. I've never seen an ugly Haitian child. They're all just gorgeous to me. I don't know what it is. There's something about their spirit that when, when they sit on my lap or when I talk to a child, I just see such incredible beauty inside of them. And they show that beauty and that love back to you. You know, I'm praying the Lord will leave us here at least another 10 years, <laughs> at least. <laughs> the need's always here, always will be. So as long as I've got a sound mind and can put one foot in front of the other, I'm going to be here doing what I believe God's called me to do.